Pepsi-Cola story begins in the year 1898 with the counter of a soda fountain in New Bern, North Carolina. It was the creation of an apothecary who owned the local pharmacy. His name, Caleb Bradham. In the summer of 1898, the young, energetic druggist began selling his drink by the name Pepsi-Cola. It didn't take long for business to take off. 1908 was a big year for Pepsi. In New Bern, Bradham opened the doors of the first official Pepsi-Cola home office. Bradham envisioned Pepsi-Cola sales around the world, so he registered his trademark in Canada and Mexico. World War I brought sugar rationing, which throttled Pepsi's growth. After the war, prices rose sharply, and Bradham bought heavily. Six months later, the sugar market crashed, and down with it fell Caleb Bradham. His Pepsi-Cola company was bankrupt. Through bankruptcy, Pepsi's formula and trademark were purchased by a financier named R.C. McGargle. For the next eight years, McGargle did what he could to prop up the value of Pepsi, only to face the stock market crash of 1929. McGargle had to sell the company or let it die. A customer who took umbrage at the Coca-Cola dominance was the Loft Candy Company. Loft's president was a man named Charles Guth, and he was tired of buying syrup at the retail price from what he considered an inflexible Coca-Cola company. So Guth decided to buy another brand, and he thought of Pepsi. With great satisfaction, Guth booted Coke out of the entire Loft chain and introduced Pepsi-Cola. For eight years, Charles Guth did great things for Pepsi-Cola, but he did it with the cash and resources of the Loft Candy Company. So in 1936, Loft sued Guth for ownership of Pepsi. In 1938, a team of individuals representing the Loft Candy Company took control of Pepsi-Cola. Installed at the top was a man who had expertise in securities on Wall Street, but none in soda pop on Main Street. His name was Walter Mack. Mack added something new. Big time advertising. Pepsi-Cola hits the spot was the first jingle in national radio advertising history. What's more, it became a hit record requested by listeners across America. But a great force was working against growth. World War II. After the war, Pepsi rebounded when Walter Mack hired a man named William Forsythe to head up a new international division. Soon, Pepsi began to establish a presence in countries around the world. During these post-war years, Pepsi made big strides. This included the hiring of a former Coca-Cola executive, Al Steele. During Al Steele's watch, Clamor translated into record Pepsi sales. By 1959, he had the company poised for greater success. And then suddenly, he died. During this transitional period, a new leader emerged. A man who rose through the company ranks from syrup salesman to president. Don Kendall was the man who brought Pepsi into the world spotlight. In 1965, Pepsi made a bigger move. The merger of Pepsi-Cola and Frito-Lay was sealed not by lawyers, but with a handshake. The result was the creation of a new company, PepsiCo, with combined sales of a half billion dollars. And from the nickel, nickel jingle of the 1930s to the uh -huh girls in the 90s, Pepsi had also spanned the generations, keeping itself fresh, alive, and literally in tune with the consumers. <laughs>